Hello, my lovely soul, and welcome to Unstoppable Confidence. I am your host, Lauren Glick. I am here to bring you my energy, my motivational speaking, and me being a confidence mentor. My mission is to inspire women to own who they are, step into their higher selves fearlessly, and live a life with unstoppable joy. On this show, we are going to cover everything from aligning your life to your higher self, setting boundaries, self-growth, and living a purpose-driven life. Let's get you living a meaningful life you cannot wait to wake up to. Stop driving and start living with ease and abundance. Cheers to living a magical life. And I am so grateful to be on this journey with you. Now, let's head into today's episode. So hello, lovely, and thank you for tuning in again on another episode of Unstoppable Confidence. Today we have... Sydney Sadik, who is an on-air entertainment and fashion expert. And I am so excited to have you inspire the listeners today, Sydney. I would, first of all, would love for you to just briefly introduce yourself and what you do. Well, thank you for having me. I feel like when you're such a multi-passionate person, it's hard to always say, I just do this one thing, but by trade, I'm a journalist. I regularly am seen hosting entertainment and fashion segments on the Today Show, E! Daily Pop, GMA, Inside Edition. I wrote the book, Aim High, How to Style Your Life and Achieve Your Goals. And last but not least, I started a daily Instagram live show in March 2020 called Lunchtime with Sydney. And I also host a weekly spinoff of that for the Today Show on their Tomorrow by Today platform. So everything I do is in the world of media and fashion, entertainment, Mm. and how all of those worlds come together in one place. I absolutely love what you said, multi-passionate entrepreneur, because that is 100% me as well. Um, When you you first started off as an entrepreneur where, cause I see, I mean, you just name drop so many huge names like the today show and E and you're like, no big deal. Like, this is what I do. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so jaded at this point, apparently now <laughs> <laughs> you're like, no big deal. just work for these huge companies. But <laughs> where did you start off with as an entrepreneur? So I think most people, you know, they think when they see you on shows, these big names, they assume that, you know, things just happened at the snap of your fingers. I had a very much a nine to five job for many years as an editor at the Daily Front Row, which was the Fashion Me publication and still is today. And that was my platform. That was my place to learn all about writing and reporting and getting to know celebrities and designers. It was really my home for so Mm -hmm. many years. I started out as an intern there, then I became a freelance reporter, then an editor. And that was really how I got my start. From there, where the entrepreneurial side of me came out was that I always knew I wanted to be on TV. Mm -hmm. And when I pitched this idea to my bosses at the magazine to start video content, it just was so early. They didn't get it. They didn't see how it was possible. They thought you would need all this money. It was just so new. And so I said, was this, what year was this? Was this before Instagram? Sorry to interrupt you, but I was like, is this before Instagram? It wasn't before Instagram. So it was right around when Instagram just started taking off. So I had just graduated, you know, from college. Um, So this was now, I'm trying to think year-wise, which is such a blur. I guess this is around 2016. Okay. So this is, you know, when things are just starting to become really much of a business for people, right? Yeah. And so I said, I could either stay at my job, which is really cushy and comfortable and everyone knows me and I'm on the steps of the Met Gala and the Grammys and it's great. Or I can leave and really do what I see as my future. And that meant taking a risk. So Mm. I leave my job, I quit. And I randomly get a call from a morning show in Chicago, literally this random, that they needed a fashion expert to contribute fashion Interesting. Now, how did they find you? Because of your previous job? Because of my bylines. So yep, in the daily. And I had started getting calls from different New York local shows, but it was once in a blue moon. The Mm -hmm. Chicago show was really my first consistent gig. And so I was flying down to Chicago every couple of weeks for two years 
doing these segments. And while I was doing that, I was freelancing at other magazines. I started getting called by E in the Today Show and it all started building and building, but it was leaving my job and not knowing what I was going to do and getting that call from this morning show yeah. that I really started realizing, okay, this is what it is to be not just a freelancer, but to be an entrepreneur. And I've been building ever since. I love it. And I, and I absolutely love the fact that you're like, okay, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to take that big leap of, of faith and I'm going to quit my nine to five job. Cause that is a huge first step that when you're looking back on it, it seems easy breezy, but in the moment it's like this huge heart wrenching, like, Oh my God, this huge See, it, decision. It felt so organic to oh. me because I've always been someone who doesn't love the idea of working for others. I've always yeah. been very independent. I've always thought sort of outside of the box. And I hated the idea of always having to convince other people mm -hmm. to do things that I felt just were so instinctually right. For my family, that was a different story. They were all very mixed on the decision. I feel like your parents, they don't really necessarily want you to just <laughs> no. like, yeah, I'm quitting and leaving I'm a salary. for myself. And they were like, right. well, where's the income? Exactly. And so I understand as a parent why that was probably scary. And, uh, you know, it's very different, but it was the best decision I made because I really tell people, especially women and men who were really young, the next generation who looked to me for advice, you can only at times make a certain amount of money if you're staying in that consistent nine to five job. Yep. Sure, maybe it's consistent, but you get capped at a certain point. Yeah. You never get capped if you work for yourself. Mm, I love that point. And my mentor always talks about the infinite amount of money that you can make as an entrepreneur. And it is so spot on. So I absolutely love that you just pointed that out, Sydney, um, because you could have the mentality of having a lack mindset or an abundant mindset. And you just hit it spot on of like, I have an infinite amount of possibilities. Yeah. Completely. And I love that. Yeah. And for so when you started out as an entrepreneur was that something that was tricky for you it sounds like you were like no it was like this easy breezy step um but was getting your feet wet in entrepreneurship how did that look for you was it easy or was it challenging to kind of build yourself as an entrepreneur well, when I was a junior in high school, which is crazy. So this is now 2011, 2012, I took yeah. a summer program at Harvard and I started a blog there and it was called Style Solutions. And I was blogging every single day. And it was the first time where I committed to myself, I'm going to write five days a week, different things. And then I got back to New York and I said, I'm going to start interviewing celebrities. So I was literally like assigning these journalism, you know, reporting jobs to myself. I love as it. A high school student. And then continuing this throughout college, Rihanna was the first person who I interviewed. I was literally looking the at first her first, one, the first one. She was at Barnes and Noble for her book that she was launching this Barnes and Noble location, by the way, was the first bookstore that my book became available in in New York. And so everything is full circle, but having my own outlet was really the first time as wow. a 17 year old that I experienced what it meant to work for myself. My so, God, as a 17 year old, you had the courage to ask Rihanna to interview her. You know, I was very shy growing up and then something changed and I don't know what it is. And we all laugh at my family because I really was so painfully shy <laughs> when I was a kid and something just changed where I never got nervous to go up to someone as big as Rihanna. I still don't get nervous with anyone who I speak to. I mean, I, mm. I get more nervous on dates than I do with celebrities. It's very <laughs> weird. I, I don't know why. That's so <laughs> funny. You mentioned that Sydney, because lately I hired a matchmaker and on my Ooh. stories, I've decided I'm just going to talk about my experiences with the matchmaker. <laughs> and I get really nervous going to the dates. I was like, I don't even want to go today. I don't even want to go. And everyone was like, go. And I'm like, this is fun. <laughs> it's okay. My father told me the other day that he was like, well, maybe it's your Instagram personality that intimidates these men. I said, you know something, <laughs> if maybe. that is the case and if they can't handle it, <laughs> then they're not for me. That's hundred percent true. But that's what I think a lot of women in a bigger sense struggle with, right? Is we now have so many fearless women who are so strong and they're making their own money and they're climbing and they don't need anybody. They want they someone, don't. but they don't need them. And so I think it's intimidating to people. I a hundred percent agree with that. And, but I, that's why I love getting guests on Unstoppable Confidence like you. Cause I mean, at the age of 17, you're interviewing people like Rihanna, like she is at 
she's a powerhouse herself. And so are you. So I absolutely love the confidence and the courage because all it takes is one second of courage to gain the confidence. And you're like, okay, I could do that hardest part. And that hardest part is like the actual going. Um, And that's what I think when you start young, that's when you, when you ask, you know, is it, was it hard to step into entrepreneurship? If you're starting super young, it's all, you know, I've always only known what it meant to fight for myself and to never be given an opportunity, but to make Uh, them. So for me, it would have been a lot more challenging and a lot scarier to stay in a consistent job and know that I was going to be stuck at a certain point versus to take that leap. And I take a leap every single day. No one knows what goes on behind, you know, the scenes. No one knows how hard it is, or you actually, you know, for your podcast, how, what it goes into booking to producing. And that's just one aspect of what I do every day. So what looks, you know, difficult to some is easy for the other and vice versa. A hundred percent agree. Um, so when you started Sydney, as your entrepreneur at 17, and going forward, when were you in your, when was that? You said that was 2016, um, around the Instagram phase. Is that where, when you started as an entrepreneur in 2016 or did- no, so 20 around 2010 um, is when I started okay. that blog at Harvard. The years are also blurred. I know. 2010 was Harvard. I graduated high school in 2012 and then college 2012 to 2016, left my job at the daily front row in go. 2018 at the end. And then it's been the last, uh, almost four years of, you know, fully being on my own. So what do you, would you say is the most challenging part as an entrepreneur for you personally? I think the most challenging part has really been brought on by COVID because Ooh. I was so used to going to events constantly hosting tons of events. So much of what I do um, and how I make my money is by working with brands. And I was hosting in-store shopping events for my followers on Instagram all the time. How fun. It is a lot of fun, um, but it was really my business. And so mm-hmm. when a pandemic you know, comes out of nowhere, that changes. So that was very difficult. I was also you know, going into TV studios right before COVID three times a week, rotating on E today, nonstop. I was about to move to LA for a position. Everything was so set and it felt like very concrete. Mm. And then this happened and, you know, change is what someone told me makes you very uncomfortable, but that uncomfortability is actually really good because it makes you even stronger. So I know that what I've been doing in the last two years, I've never started my own Instagram show. Um, but, but that's really, what's been, you know, the most challenging is just feeling so on top of it and so prepared and it can completely get stripped away from you for reasons that are so beyond your control or because of your ability or capability. It's just the world. And so that is why, and I completely agree. COVID has affected everyone in so many ways. So you're, um, Lunchtime with Sydney. Is that, is that the name of it? Yes. Yep. You started that because of COVID. I started that show the first week of lockdown in my mom's Holy basement. Moly. You yep. were just like, I see it. I have to go. Something needs to change. That is a very fast reaction, Sydney. Yeah. That has always sort of been my personality. I feel like I am very much someone who doesn't sit back and wait. I do. And I know in my head that if you're not one of the first to do something, someone Mm -hmm. else is going to do it. And then you're just going to be another person, which doesn't mean you're not special and not great, but I like being first. And that's what I did. My show was first. I had the first Instagram live show before everyone was, you know, going on Instagram live and mine, I think still is probably the most frequent of anyone. I mean, we were doing five days for a long time. Now we're to three. Cause I do the today show and that's four. I need one day to do my other stuff. Holy but, moly. Yeah. Over nearly 300 episodes of my show and 150, almost the today show. I love it. So being your lunchtime show was the reason why you got on the partnership with today show. Correct. Correct. So before that I had been on Hoda and Jenna, you know, many, many times, uh, showing women how to dress, but this was really, uh, the catalyst of, yeah, of that partnership. They mm-hmm. liked my idea and they said, why don't you do it for us? I love it. What, 
when are you live for yours and then the today show as well? So everyone listening could Thank tune you. in on your Instagram, of course. Yeah. So my lunch times air Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on my account at Sydney Sadik uh, at 12 30 PM Eastern. And the today shows airs on their platform called tomorrow by today. And that airs on Fridays at 12 30 PM Eastern. So I'm going to ask you a really challenging question. Cause I was like, wow, if somebody asked me that there are so many different people that you have interviewed, what is in your top five. So I'm not saying what is your favorite, but what is one of your top five interviews with somebody and why? Oh, it's, such I know a that's hard. a hard question. I was like, Cindy's not going to like me for asking this, but I mean, you interview <sighs> some really high profile people. So I'm like, Oh my God, like what? I'll, I'll list like, a couple for you. Okay. I there you interviewing go. Carol Baskin because Tiger King was the first show that I've been <laughs> watched during lockdown. And I thought, she was funny. Like, I thought she was like the kookiest woman, but she's I'm so watching. crazy. Right. And I was so fascinated by her and just this whole like world that felt so foreign to me. Yeah. And she follows me on Instagram. I'm one of maybe like 30 people. And I just really <laughs> like appreciated how real she was. So I, I enjoyed it. interviewing her. I really enjoyed interviewing Mika Brzezinski from Morning Joe. Elijah Mm. Cummings had uh, officiated her wedding with Joe Scarborough. And she actually like took us into her room where it was all the memorabilia from her wedding and like showed us all these really cool documents and pictures. So that felt very rare because she's someone who we Mm -hmm. see on TV as being one way, but she got very personal. Um, I loved interviewing uh, a lot of the Outer Banks cast members, Madeline Klein and Chase Stokes, because those are two of my uh, favorite Netflix actors. I think they're awesome. I mean, there are so many, Lauren, like, I know oh, I've interviewed the Kardashians. I spent a whole day with Tom Have Brady. You really? Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Um, Olivia Culpo was a lot of fun. If there's anyone else who's really made, you know, who was really interesting was Steve Madden. I've been wearing his shoes forever. Interesting. Yeah. And he has a story that's so unique. He obviously went you know, to prison and he was just so open and raw. And I really appreciate when a guest can just tell it how just it is be... and feel it, you know? Ooh, that vulnerability gets you every time, right? Yeah. But there are so many, I know I'm missing a lot. <laughs> I know. That's why I was like the top, like, you know, it's just the ones. And that's the thing is like the ones that stick out to you are like those ones that you're like, you're never going to forget it. <laughs> uh, oh, Drew Barrymore is the last one because Justin oh. Bieber watched the interview live and started commenting during the live. So I don't know what the fans were more crazed about watching Drew or seeing Justin, Justin Bieber. interact. Yeah, it was Justin. It's only Justin. So that's the last one. Did you get Justin Bieber on as an interview E because of the commenting on Drew Barrymore? We have not done that. It's not because I haven't tried. So he might be, you know, on the bucket list of someone who we'll just have to keep on pushing and pushing for. But I mean, yet. he's he's listening and he's chatting away. So he knows who you are. Why hasn't he just like <sighs> even in? You know, something I can't understand a lot of men. So I'll put him in that category. <laughs> Are you, do you interview a, like, what's the ratio of men to women? Cause I have only had like a couple men on my interview ease. Do you yeah. interview men? Women doesn't really matter. Everyone, everyone. I've had a lot of men. I would say it's probably almost about 50, 50 actually. Ooh, yeah. I know. Cause it's interesting. Like interviewing men, I feel like it might be like, I don't know. I'm just like, I'm just not there yet. Like I just, they're pretty good. Sometimes I actually think they're even more open than women. Sometimes I think women, you know, we think a little bit more about how we're going to be judged and perceived. And I think men don't actually, you know what at all. (laughs) Yeah. So sometimes my more, you know, interesting, like interviewing Chase Stokes, for example, and talking Uh about dating, he was way more open about that than Madeline Klein was. So this is going to be a very bad question right now, Sydney. Yeah. Chase. No, I'm thinking about what was that Netflix documentary on the NFL football player who was the bachelor that ended up being oh, gay. Colton. Colton. <sighs> that Not Colton. Have... Do no. you like him? I do like him. I was never... I, kinda... I don't yeah. know. I just like his story for some reason. It's interesting. I mean, I was a huge bachelor fan as a child yeah. when the show just started. And I feel like the last couple of years, I'm just... I'm so over seeing none of these relationships really working out. Yeah. But I'm sort of like, yeah. I don't ever inside. watch The Bachelor. I got so excited. I flinged my my mic in the air. <laughs> I don't 
know what it. it is about Colton's story. I think it's because he was the bachelor and then he decided, and I watched his documentary and he was so vulnerable in that documentary. He went from being so, uh, you know, almost lying is not the word, but he was yeah. really, you know, not authentic by leading yep. these women on to believe that, right. That, yeah. Uh, that he felt for them, or maybe he did feel for them. I don't want to put words in, but you know what yeah. I'm trying to 100%. say. hundred <laughs> percent. And then now he's so vulnerable with his I story. Know. So it's interesting. He took a turn. He took a 180. <laughs> he took a 180, 100%. So, okay. That was that different names, Lauren. Come on, get your yes, celebrities right. Different. Yep. <laughs> so, uh, and I know what it takes to like put together interviewees. And so if I ask, okay, other than the Today Show and your lunch show, because I know that is a lot. And I know you're a multi-passionate entrepreneur. So other than your lives on Instagram, I know you have written a book that I want to talk about. And then let's talk about your book. And then I want to see what else is going on in, in Sydney's future. Okay. Yeah. So my book is called aim high, how to style your life and achieve your goals. Mm. It's really to help people bring out their confidence from within while also, Ooh, I yeah. might have to check out that book. I'm going you to have to, yeah. um, and also how to develop your sense of personal style. There are so mm. many people who have no idea where to begin. And I totally get it. It can be very intimidating to walk into a Zara and not knowing what's going to fit you, what's worth investing in, what's too trendy. It's very complicated. So oh, yeah. this book is to really be there, you know, to help those people who need the help, but it's also very much, you know, incorporates my journey. And it's to say that you don't have to just write a book to say, look at how much you've done and that this is everything. And this is it. This is really for the book for the person who's also on the journey. And Mm. it shows a lot of that and the ins and outs of building my career and my own journey with body image and gaining 30 pounds in college to losing that weight. And just so much of what people don't know from just looking at me on Instagram. And so, uh, it was actually really great to release it during COVID, which most people think that's awful. I didn't get a book party, but I did get a lot of virtual events and a lot of readership because it was the first time I think people in a really long time appreciated books for really what they were versus just, you know, I am definitely, definitely one of those that needs the hard book to flip Same. the pages. I don't yep. know how people read on a Kindle. It's just like page. I'm like, no, <laughs> I know I'm the same way. I have to hold it in my hands. It just feels good. So I could get that on Amazon. Any of the listeners could get that on Amazon. Yes. Well, you'll have to send me your address and I will send you a book, but yes, oh Amazon. Can Barnes you sign it? Yes, I will. Oh my I God. I love do. it. I'm so Target. excited. Yeah. So I'm so excited of any book about inner confidence growth, even though that's what I really do love teaching. And this podcast is all about unstoppable confidence. So it yep. goes directly to the listeners here today, go out and get Sydney's book. It sounds Thank like a you. must read for sure. And I'm going to read it too, because anything, I think it's, it's like, as one of my other mentors says, um, she always says new level, new devil. So I I think there's, I know. Right. And it's like, always, you are always bettering yourself. There is no cap just like on income Mm -hmm. of what we get to become in the future. So I'm sure there's some really solid nuggets in that book from your life experiences as well. There's a lot of lessons. <laughs> Yay. So I'm going to go check that out. And um, a quick question about writing the book. Um, when did you write it? Was that during the COVID time as well? No, no. So I got my book deal in 2019, right at the beginning of the year. Mm. And then we came out with the book in September, 2020. So nice. Well, a little that's over a good a time for everyone at the beginning of COVID to um, purchase the book for sure. It was, it was good. You know, I, I was doing so much during the height of COVID when everyone else wasn't, it was this yeah. very weird period of life where I was like going, going, going on a hamster wheel and everyone else was stopping. And, you know, it, it was a weird it was a weird thing to feel like you were the only one who was kind of moving like that. You know, I could, I could see that. I understand what you're saying. Cause there was, I was working for Tony Robbins at the beginning of COVID and there was, yeah, there was a transition for me moving away. Cause I was living out in Scottsdale, Arizona, moved back to LA. So Mm -hmm. I hear you. Cause there was a huge pivot point for me at the beginning of COVID where I'm like, okay, I'm going to just be quiet for one. Cause then black lives mattered. And there was a lot of 
things yeah. going on online that I was like, I'm not comfortable enough to move forward with my entrepreneurship yet. Yeah. There was a lot going on. That's, that's there was a sure. lot going on. So when you get in those times of, of so much going on, are you able to still keep time for yourself? Cause I feel like that's a huge priority that, um, some people kind of I do, but I feel like there's this shame still of taking time for exactly like even my family who's super supportive. I think they think it's weird, you know, because now we're kind of living together again when, you know, at three o'clock, I want to go take a walk on the bike path because Mm -hmm. I literally have just been on. And, you know, when I'm speaking on a show, I'm talking to you right now, very, very organically. Right. Yeah. And I'm always authentic hundred percent of myself, but when you're on, you're on. And when you're hosting, it's very different than when you're a guest. Yes. It's just different. And so, and I'm in zoom meetings all day long, or I'm in podcasts, I'm on four podcasts this week. I still think there's this shame around taking time for you. And when someone tries to make me feel badly for that, I don't give a shit. I really don't. I get my nails done. I get my massage. I I don't care what anyone thinks or of a guy. I don't care. It's not about the time that you work each Mm -hmm. day. It's about how hard you are, the quantity versus the quality. And you know, something like my mentor, when you keep talking about yours, my mentor, he said to me, you know, this is like the first time in a really long time, or maybe ever he said that I, that he's seen in my life Mm -hmm. where you can actually make some time for you. I used to be hopping on a plane. I was literally, I swear every other week, either on a plane or a train between New York, DC, Chicago, and LA. I was never home. I never dated. I barely saw my friends. So it was a very thrilling time in my life, but it was Mm -hmm. also not reality. No one can be that, you know, out and about and sustain it. Right. For so yeah. long. I think when so. we're y- y- a little bit younger, cause that's how I was when I was like my early twenties of like co- always constantly on the grind, but now I definitely have time to take care of myself. Cause it's so important. Cause if you burn out, it's like, there's it like, is. I think it's, I don't want to say it's like a getting or older thing, but you know, it, it, it is. it's like, you just get worn out and my brain just stops working. I know. And so to answer your question, yeah, every day I make sure that I do something for myself, whether that's calling a friend, mm. I read a chapter of my girly chick flick novel, uh, you know, getting my nails done, which I haven't done in like a month because of this new variant, but you know. yeah, I know I got the new variant. <laughs> no, not so fun. now you're like nails for me every day. Yeah, nails every day. Um, <laughs> So, but I think it is really important for people to do that and to never compare what's good for you Mm. with someone else. I love it. So what can the listeners be expecting from Sydney in 2022? Is there anything new going on for you right now? There is, there's something that I've been working on, uh, that I am very excited about that is an extension of journalism. I, in addition to my book, um, I have written for years for different publications based in New York, um, Mm -hmm. mainly in the Hamptons where I've been going to my whole life, which, you know, you think the Hamptons, whatever, but there's actually a very strong community, uh, of publications out there. And, having done so many uh, different articles and editing for so many of out there, I'm really excited to be doing uh, something fresh and innovative in that category, which I'll uh, be tapping into this summer. And Mm. uh, I have to keep it very vague for now, but (laughs) something in writing. I love that. And that gives a little sneak peek on the listeners today to go check you out on your Instagram page and to follow you and to see what's up because Sydney, you are, your finger is like on the pulse of everything going on it. And, um, that's why I absolutely loved this interview today. So I, first of all, wanted to say thank you for your time because you are one busy woman and, um, just for the listeners today, it's just like, And I feel like your first story of, oh, I was 17 and I had Rihanna on as my first guest, like stop Mm -hmm. holding yourself back from, oh, but that person might say no. I think that's so important. And I think your, your story really drives it home is that just take that huge leap and really just stop putting limitations on yourself. Because when you started out, you're like Rihanna first guest. And I was like, That's exactly how you have to be. I mean, even, you know, because of my broadcast career, Mm -hmm. getting an agent was something that was always this thing that was, you know, going over my head. I was meeting with all these different agencies 
and none of them, you know, felt right. And I kept saying, these are all small. Why am I not with the big guys? And then yeah. I got approached by the head agent of one of the top agencies and they out rep me. And so I agree. If everyone stopped holding himself to a low bar mm-hmm. and you really acknowledged how good you really are and the worth and how that should be reciprocated by whatever validation you need to keep going your career, that's what you should do. Sydney, so- you're so rad. Did you know that? Oh, thank you. I don't know. <laughs> I just do my thing. And I guess a few people the last, along. That, this, this statement, the last couple of sentences, I was like, Sydney's super rad. You're really down to earth. Thank you. I, yeah, of course. I, I think the worst thing anyone can have too is an ego. I think yeah. it's just, you, you I, can't have it. Nope, not at all. So for the listeners today, how could they find you? What is some upcoming things that you might want to promote for any of the listeners? The mic is yours. Well, I'm not sure when this is coming out. Uh, About the end of February or mid-February, February, February, end of February. Okay. So my Instagram account is at Sydney Sadek. By the time this uh, has come out, there's going to be a lot of cool people on all of my shows that I'm working on, but stay tuned for more cool guests and my new projects. I'll be uh, really open to what that is probably around the time this comes out. So I love it, Sydney. Thank you so much again for all the inspiration, your stories and your words were, it, they hit me. So I'm like, Girl, keep doing your thing. And you did an awesome job. So good. You have such a voice for this, by the way. It's ah, so good. Like, so do you. But thank you've you. been doing no, no, it definitely. forever. You, you, <laughs> you're t- true, but you've been doing it for a really long time. So that means a lot. Thank um, you. I just wanted to say thank you again for your time. Of and for the listeners today, thank you so much for tuning in. And we will catch you on the next episode. Bye, love. I hope you are so excited about where you're going because I know I'm excited for you. Thank you so much for listening in today. If you loved this episode, it would mean the world to me if you shared it with a girlfriend or posted it on social media, tag me so I could personally say thank you. I am so grateful. And until next time, 